Hello, it's May the 1st, and according to some investment law, we should sell in May, go away, and come back on St Ledger's Day. St Ledger's Day is the second week of September, by the way, if you're not a follower of horse racing. And our American brothers have it that Labour Day, September the 2nd, is the day that you should come back uh, into the markets. But that's all flim flam in my view. I'm long, I'm especially long the US indices and I've no current plans to lighten up this May. I don't see any reason to and here's why. Forget sell in May, stick with the trend is your friend. The maxim sell in May, go away, come back on St Ledger's Day um, was born at a time when markets really did slow down over the summer because brokers, traders and all the rest of it were taking their summer holidays. But these days, holidays don't last as long. We can fly to where we want to be in a few hours. It doesn't take several weeks by transatlantic steamer to get there. And once we're there, we have our wretched smartphones. So save for remote parts of the Himalayas, it's impossible to get away even if you wanted to. In the meantime, innumerable computers, quants, algos, bots, they're doing all the work that was previously done by brokers and traders, and they don't need holidays. It's one of the reasons employers like robots. In short, markets no longer slow down. They don't even sleep, let alone take holidays. And so whatever rationale there was behind that maxim has long since become an anachronism. And countless studies have been done looking at the sell in May strategy. And overall, over the past 20 or 50 years, there's been some marginal outperformance. But there are far better strategies to be found. I outlined one of them last week, that trend following strategy. And with each passing year, the sell in May strategy works less and less well. Trend following, by whatever means you use to define and follow a trend, works better. And so does buying the breakout. Whenever a market's going up, it's inevitably going to break to new highs and breakouts lead to higher highs far more often than they don't. And that's especially the case under a monetary system, which, unlike, you know, gold, is not finite. The Nasdaq broke to new highs last week. It has for years been the US market leader. The S&P followed. The Dow Jones is flirting with new highs. The laggard has been the Russell 2000 index of small companies. But even though it's not at all time highs, it's still in an uptrend. Now, you can make the argument that the indices are making an almighty double top. They might be. But all markets that are testing old highs look like they're making a double top until they decidedly break higher. You could also argue that the fact that the Russell 2000 is lagging is a bearish sign. You want to see small caps leading. And that can be true as well. But small cap leadership is something you tend to see towards the end of bull markets. And you have to look at things like capital flows. And where would you rather have your money at the moment? In the US, Europe, China, Russia, South America? Most money managers are going to be arriving at the same conclusion as you. There might be opportunities in all of these places, but surely the US looks like the best bet at the moment. And so it makes sense to be overweight the US. Here's the S&P 500 over the last two years. And this red line underneath is the 30 day simple moving average. And uh, just shows the average price of the last 30 days. And that gives you an idea of the intermediate term trend. Uh, up, down, up, down, and so on. And it is clearly sloping up. The trend is up. And yes, the market will stumble as these old highs are, are retested. That's the all-time high there late last year. Late last year. Um, but there's no reason that this market can't carry on doing what it's been doing since late last year, which is grinding higher. Here's the Nasdaq uh, over the last two years and the Nasdaq has been the market leader. You can see these are the old highs from late last year. You can see it's already above uh, those highs. And I know um, Alphabet or Google put out some disappointing results, but I don't think that's game over for the Nasdaq. Once again, the trend is up. Finally is the uh, Russell 2000, which is the index of small cap stocks in America. And that's been the laggard and you can see the big uptrend 2017-2018, uh, peak in September last year, big downtrend, quite a big sell off, 1740 at the top, down to below 1280 at the low uh, late last year. And it's very strong uptrend now, um, but it's run into resistance at its February highs, but the trend is still gently up. Um, that's the Russell 2000.
Barron's just published their semi-annual big money poll and it seems there are many fund managers who de-risked their portfolios in the market weakness of late last year who are now starting to buy again. And there was a fund manager survey by the Bank of America, meanwhile, that revealed that equity weightings are low compared to their historical average. And that means there are plenty of potential buyers out there. These markets can go a lot higher. Now, recent action has been that of an orderly an orderly advance rather than a blow off top. And that can continue. If we get a proper breakout in the S&P and the Dow, then things may start to get a bit more disorderly, but on the upside, and the small caps will play catch up as, as risk on takes hold, but we're not there yet. In short, the trend is up. There'll be wobbles as we flirt with old highs, but selling in May this year would be fighting the trend. And more often than not, that has not proved an effective strategy. Let the trend be your friend instead.